Hi, I'm DJ, and in this video, I'm going to explain importance sampling. My reason is simple. I have a long list of machine learning topics I'd like to cover in the future, and importance sampling shows up a few times as a trick, and that's all it takes to make it as a video topic. Now, it turns out it's difficult to understand importance sampling in a vacuum. It'll make a lot more sense if we motivate it from the perspective of Monte Carlo methods. So let's dive right in. These techniques are concerned with one extremely important test that shows up a ton in machine learning, calculating expectations. Without going into too much detail, expectations are very frequently the answers that many of our ML algorithms are seeking. They show up when fitting models, doing probability queries, summarizing model performance, training a reinforcement learning agent, just a load of stuff. Now, mathematically, that means we like to calculate this. Here, x is a continuous random vector, boldface means it's a vector, and p of x is the probability density of x. f of x is just some scalar function of x we happen to be interested in. Now, you should think of this as the probability weighted average of f of x over the entire space where x lives. To communicate that, it's often written like this. As an aside, if x were discrete, then this integral would turn into a sum. Considering none of the concepts really change for the discrete case, we'll continue with the continuous case. Okay, now the problem is, sometimes, in fact, a lot of the time, this integral is impossible to calculate exactly. Typically, it's because the dimension of x is high, so the space it lives within is exponentially huge, and so we have no hope of adding everything up within it. And this is where Monte Carlo methods come in. The idea is to merely approximate the expectation with an average, this average. What this says is we collect n samples of x from the distribution p, plug those into f, and take their average. It turns out that as n gets large, this thing approaches our answer. For the sake of brevity, let's call this s. To get a feel for this, let's play with a one-dimensional example. Let's say p of x is this and f of x is this. In this case, things are simple enough such that we can calculate the answer exactly. To do that, we look at the product function and calculate the area under the curve. This is the truth we're after, but please, Use your imagination and pretend we can't actually calculate the area this way, because in the general case, it can be impossible. So instead, let's approximate this area using Monte Carlo. First, we sample x's from p and then plug those into f. The average of these is an approximation to the integral. To emphasize, the core of Monte Carlo is to say this average is an approximation to this area. I'm not proving that, but trust me, it's true and very important. Frankly, it's more important than important sampling. Okay, one thing to point out is that this average s is random. If I were to resample everything, I'd get a new s, and I could keep doing this. This means that our sample average has its own distribution. In fact, Let's check that out. Let's say the true expectation we'd like to estimate is this value. Also, let's say we repeat our estimate many times, giving us many s's. Now, we're in a better position to view the distribution of s. Now, to avoid confusion, this distribution is just useful for a theoretical understanding. In applications, we only get one sample of s. Keep that in mind as I talk about this thing. Okay, the first thing to notice here is the distribution is centered on the true expectation we're after. This is a critical property. When we have it, we say our estimate is unbiased. Also, looking at this, we can see that the variance of S, something which tells you about the width of this distribution, matters a lot. 
It gives us a sense of how off a single estimate is likely to be from the truth. Now it turns out the variance of S is the variance of F of X scaled down by M. Okay, one other thing. Notice this distribution is a normal distribution. Where did that come from? Well, that's the central limit theorem. It's a magical and super famous result. And in this case, it says it doesn't matter what P or F are. No matter what, as N gets large, this will get closer and closer to a normal distribution. In fact, we can summarize this by writing this. To repeat myself a bit, this says S's distribution approaches the normal as N gets large. The mean of that normal is the expectation we're trying to calculate. And its variance is the variance of F of X scaled down by N. Please take a second and absorb all that. Done? Excellent. You're now ready to learn about importance sampling. We start by introducing a new distribution, Q of X. As we'll see, this is something we get to choose. And again, we are interested in the same expectation we had earlier. Note, this still involves P of X. Okay, now, here's the trick. The trick of the century. We're going to take this term and multiply it by Q of X over Q of X, which is just one. We can do this without damaging anything as long as Q of X is greater than zero whenever P of X times F of X is non-zero. And that gives us this integral. Looking at how I've bracketed things, we can see that it's the probability weighted average of a new function, where the probability is given by Q instead of P. So, just like we did earlier, we can write that like this. Stepping back, this says the P probability weighted average of F of X is equal to the Q probability weighted average of F of X times the ratio of P to Q densities. That's the trick. Now, if we look at this and we recall the lesson of Monte Carlo, we can estimate this with samples from Q. What I mean by that is this expectation, which is equal to the original expectation we're interested in, is approximately equal to this average, where the XIs are sampled from Q. Let's call this new average R and ask, what's the advantage of using this? Well, first, it's unbiased, just like in the previous case. And second, it has a new, possibly improved variance. That is, the variance of R, which gives us a sense of how off from the truth a single sample of R is likely to be, is the variance of F times the density ratio where samples are generated according to Q, scaled down by M. So the hope is we can choose Q such that this variance is less than the variance we dealt with earlier. Now, to do that, it turns out Q should say X's are likely wherever the absolute value of P of X times F of X is high. That's a key result, which I'm not proving, but it kind of makes sense when you recognize that we are trying to estimate the area under the P times F curve. Got it? Okay, it's about time we do an example. To help, here is a little summary of the core ideas we're demonstrating. Okay. Let's do an example where important sampling will reduce the variance quite a bit. In particular, let's say P of X is this and F of X is this. As a point of reference, let's estimate without important sampling. Notice how much our estimate is bouncing around. This is because F is large only in rare events under P. So a small set of samples have an outsized impact on the average. Now, important sampling can help us here because we can make it sample the more important regions more frequently. In particular, I'll make Q of X this. But now, if we'd like to use Q samples, 
we need to adjust the F function. So let's do that by multiplying it by the density ratio, which gives us this. To declutter things a bit, I'll drop P of X. Okay, now after this adjustment, we can proceed just like we did with plain Monte Carlo. That is, we sample from Q, pass those into the density ratio adjusted F, and then calculate their average. This is our new estimate. And the whole point is, if we repeat this process, we'll get something that bounces around less than if we sampled the previous way. That's the whole idea. The variance is reduced, and with a single estimate, we expect to be less wrong. Okay, so there you have it. And if you're like me when you first learned this, you're a bit confused. How are we supposed to choose Q in practice if its best answer depends on P and F? which are supposedly difficult to work with. That is indeed tricky, and the answers aren't very satisfying. The hope is that we'll know a few things about P and F which will guide us. Maybe we know where F is high, or maybe we can pick a Q which merely approximates P. It's very much an art. Also, fair warning, it's very easy to do a terrible job selecting Q, especially in high dimensions. The symptom of that will be the density ratio will vary wildly over the samples, and a majority of them will be very small. This means your average will be effectively determined by a small number of samples, making it high variance. Not good. Okay, to wrap up, I'd like to comment on when important sampling is likely to be useful. First, it's useful when P is difficult or impossible to sample from. I know I didn't cover that as a motivation, but it's certainly one of them. Second, we need to be able to evaluate P of X, meaning we can plug in an X and get a value. In fact, that's a little more than we need. We actually only need the ability to compute an unnormalized density, but we'd have to tweak our procedure a bit. See my sources if you're curious. Next, Q of X needs to be easy to evaluate and sample from, since our estimate will ideally be made of many samples from it. And lastly, and this is the hard part, you need to be able to choose Q of X to be high where the absolute value of P of X times F of X is high, which is not necessarily an easy task. Good luck. And that leaves only one thing left to say. Thank you for your focus.